Hello everybody, another little episode here from Formula Challenge looking about cars. Today we're going to talk about understeer and oversteer. Pretty basic stuff, a lot of you experience it um, in some way, form or another, but there's a few basic rules that um, some people that we've been teaching and everything else don't know and some little clues that could help you just get a little bit more out of the car. First of all, any car will understeer or oversteer depending on how you drive it and how it's set up. So it's impossible to have a neutral car through a whole track. It's always got a little bit understeer, a little bit oversteer. Some people prefer one or the other. Um, I prefer a car that has got no understeer, a little bit taily, because you can always control that. If you have a car that's a little bit understeery, it feels more safe, but it's actually harder to go far. So you find that as you get more experience in driving a race car and as you want to drive it faster, you tend to want a car to have more um, front grip than rear. Um, versus when you're learning, it's actually far better to have it a little bit understeer, a little bit less front grip. One of the things we've been turning up and understeer, obviously just for those who don't know, pretty basic stuff. Understeer is when you come into a corner, Paul's going to show us you turn, it doesn't turn the way you want it to, so you generally want to turn a little bit more, try and turn a bit more. The front wheels have not got enough grip, the car goes straight ahead. Um, one small point with that, if that ever happens, and it can happen of course in a lot of cars, the last thing you want to do is wind on more steering lock. That makes the car understeer more. So if Paul's going through a corner, it starts to understeer there, you actually unwind the steering lock, which actually regrains grip to keep you going again. Really hard thing to do because I feel like you should do the opposite, but that's what you want to do. Obviously, oversteer is when the, the back actually lets go first. Come in the corner, we're turning in, the car's got a bit of oversteer, a little bit obviously lock required, and then it'll carry on, away we go again. So, again, not a problem, um, it's quite a nice thing to have, and it just takes a bit of experience to get used to. As you get better and better in your craft, and over you've done it a few years and everything else, Instead of driving to what the car is doing, you will actually drive to what the car is about to do. Um, it sounds a bit silly, but basically what it is is that after you've been driving for fair, quite a few years, you actually realise that one metre further down the track, the car is going to kick out oversteer, and you need to put a bit of opposite lock in now to stop that happening. So we're going through a corner, and then suddenly you'll see someone do this, and that's it, and the car from the outside doesn't move, and that's driving in front of the car. When you're learning, what happens is basically going through a corner, the back comes out, turning through a corner, the back comes out, then you do the opposite lock, and then you control the slide and carry on. So that's you, that's the car driving you versus you driving the car. So as you get better, you'll actually start predicting that and actually driving in front of the car, and um, while the steering wheel and the cockpit might move, the spectator actually won't see the car move. Um, but obviously Joe Blanc, if they're driving the car, will actually spin, so it's just something to think about. Some real basic stuff, Hope that helps and uh, we'll see you next time.